Hi, it's John Weisenberger, and welcome to module number two of your Chain Reactions Marketing Profitable Time Management Strategies. Now that you completed the assignments from module number one, you should have a solid understanding of how you're currently spending and perhaps wasting a lot of your valuable time. So with that knowledge, you can now determine the best strategies to use to correct any unproductive behaviors you may have. So in module number two, I want to show you 15 ways to sharpen your time management skills so you can thwart those time management, um, time bandits that we talked about in module number one. Now, time management strategy number one is all about setting clear priorities. Now, this isn't so much a strategy as it's just the number one basic fundamental principle of time management. So once you accept that you can't do everything, you need to decide what needs to be completed now and what can be completed later and what someone else can do for you. There's a book called The One Thing by author Gary Keller, and it's identified that behind every successful person is their one thing. Now, no matter how success is measured, personal or professional, only your ability to dismiss distractions and concentrate on your highest priority one thing stands between you and achieving your goals. When setting priorities each day, your to-do lists you create should be put through the one thing filter and then reorganize so your one thing priority item is always on the top of your list and the lower priority items are less visible or on the bottom. Once you've established your one thing priorities, which will also naturally reflect the priorities and goals of your business, you need to stick to them. Just because someone else feels something is of higher priority, that doesn't mean that it holds the same status next to your other tasks. So the one thing prioritization method is a helpful way to manage your personal life and leisure time as well as your business time. Uh, spare time is precious, and Keller makes a good point of saying that planning for your time away from work is one of the first priorities you should do every year. So when it comes to setting clear priorities, I highly recommend this book for you and anyone in your business or in your personal life that needs help setting clear priorities. Time management strategy number two is using your skills and then delegating your weaknesses. So as a business owner, your day naturally consists of tasks you dislike doing. Some are essential, like signing checks or reviewing financial statements and other business maintenance issues, while other tasks are simply not within your skill set. So for example, if you're a strong public speaker but struggle with report writing, then delegate the report writing to a copywriter or an editor or someone else who has a better skill at doing that. If you run a retail store and have no experience in design, well, then outsource your design of your signage or your floor displays, perhaps your website design, etc., to, to someone else, right? Freelance professionals are often less expensive, cost half as much as what your own time is worth, plus they can complete the task faster than you typically could do, could do it yourself. Your time should be saved for tasks that use and develop your strengths and skills effectively. When you focus only on the things that you're best at, your stress is better managed and ultimately a better product or service is produced for your customers or, or your clients. Now, another good reason you'll want to delegate more tasks is that it's the only way you'll ever get everything done. Delegation is a vital management skill that needs to be refined in practice, and once mastered, delegation is the real key to profitable time management. You know, too often owners and managers believe that it will be faster and more efficient to complete a task themselves than to train or monitor someone else doing it. Other times, there are no internal resources to give assignments to, so they take on the tasks themselves. And as a result, the following behaviors and issues can often be seen in many small businesses. So number one, a lot of times owners and senior staff are overworked while the junior staff are underutilized. Junior staff are not given the opportunity to grow and develop in their roles and, and may perceive that you have a lack of trust or confidence in their ability. And as a result, your business often can lose good people who don't feel valued. Number two, owners and senior staff are always in a reactive state instead of in a visionary or proactive state. Delegation happens at the very last minute and the junior staff have little understanding of either the overall project needs or your expectations for completion of the task. So the easiest way to fix this problem is to fix it before it starts. So create a solid team of staff or third-party alliance partners around you who are well trained and prepared to support your business and if you have employees, you know, you want to learn to attract and retain qualified people who can be cross-trained and, and promoted within your business. And lastly, be sure that communications flow throughout the business so everyone has the service and product knowledge necessary to step in and assist you when it's necessary. This will make delegation one of your most powerful time management tools. So remember to focus on your strengths and delegate your weaknesses, and that will go a long way to making you more productive in your tasks that you, only you can do. Time management strategy number three is just learning to say no to things. You know, it's easy to fall into the habit of saying yes to everything. And after all, you're the business owner, right? So you th always tend to believe that the buck stops with you and no one else can complete these tasks as well as you can, right? 
for example, you may feel that you'll lose a customer or client if you don't help them with their request to help with a school or charity car wash or a 5K run or whatever, but that's wrong. The most successful business owners have a keen sense of how their time is best spent, and they delegate any remaining responsibilities to trusted others, as we learned earlier, right? So unfortunately, it's often just too easy to say yes to every request in the moment, and then you later feel overwhelmed when it's added to your to-do list. Now, you may be more popular and not ruffle any feathers by saying yes to every request, but what's the toll it's taking on your stress levels and on your workload? Your time is valuable, so you need to learn to protect it. And remember, if it's too challenging to say no immediately, you can always request some time to think about it. This way, you can evaluate your workload and realistically decide whether or not you can take on any new projects. Then, once you make that decision and say no, you need to stand by that decision or insist on bringing in the necessary resources to get the work done. Time management number four is create and keep a strict schedule. As I said earlier, as a business owner, you need to be able to focus and concentrate on your one thing, highest priority project without interruption. And the only way you can do this is to commit to a strict schedule. Now, once you understand your work style and concentration patterns that you have throughout the day, you can allocate periods of your day to your specific one thing task, so then you can schedule it and stick to it. You know, schedule time for list creation, prioritizing, reading and returning email messages or telephone messages or uh, client messages, schedule time for meeting preparation, schedule time for being with your family and taking care of your recreation and fitness routines, um, schedule anything that you do throughout the day and then put those less important tasks for later in the day after you have completed working on your one thing. Remember, there is a training period involved in beginning any new habit or routine for yourself and for those around you. So. Use your voicemail, use your out-of-office email messages, and a closed door to begin to let people know your schedule and when you can and cannot be disturbed. By creating and keeping a strict schedule, this is one of the most powerful and productive time management strategies you can follow, and I highly recommend that if you don't do anything else, schedule your workday and make sure other people understand when you can and cannot be interrupted. Time management number strategy number five is just being decisive. You know, not making a decision on something is a decision all by itself. And the most successful business owners have the ability to make good decisions quickly and efficiently, and they don't waste time deliberating over simple choices. However, when you're in a leadership position, people are often afraid of making the wrong decisions or looking foolish if they make a mistake in front of their junior staff or employees. What they don't realize is that hesitating or avoiding a decision can impact their leadership image just as much or more so than making the wrong decision. Not only can being indecisive be personally stressful, but it's also stressful for those around you who perhaps are waiting on your decision. You need to remember that you need to make the best decisions you can make with the information you have and the time frame you have to make the decision. No one expects you to be a fortune teller, so be decisive, make some mistakes and learn from them. And always remember, imperfect action beats perfect inaction. Time management strategy number six is to manage your telephone interruptions. You know, your phone can be a huge source of time theft if you let it. If you're available to take phone calls at any time of the day, you're setting yourself up to be working at all hours of the day, including at home during your evenings and weekends. Now, let's face it, the phone will always ring when you're supposed to be focused on an important task. However, this is something that can be easily avoided. Just like creating a strict calendar schedule where you've figured out when you're most productive during the day, whether it's morning or afternoon, during that time, Set your phone on do not disturb or have your calls directed to a receptionist or have them go directly to voicemail. And lastly, um, to structure your available phone time further, just let callers know on your voicemail what specific time of day is best to reach you by phone and then set that time aside to receive and return all your calls. Time management number strategy is keep your work environment organized. Have you ever tried to make dinner in a messy kitchen? You know, more of your time is spent looking for pots and pans and the necessary tools than in actually cooking the meal, right? So the same goes for your work environment. If your desk and office is in a constant state of chaos, then your mind's going to be in that constant state of chaos, too. In fact, some studies have revealed that the average senior business leader spends nearly four weeks each year navigating through messy and cluttered desks looking for lost information. Now, does that sound like productive time to you? Keeping your work environment organized is one of the easiest strategies to implement. By tidying up your desk at the end of the day, each day, um, once you make that initial clean sweep, it's easy to maintain that order each day, and, and you can put an end to all that chaos of looking for things all the time. And as for your factory or your sales floor, there's, there's many ways to make its layout more conductive to effective time um, management as well. So you can do things like trying to minimize the distance between office equipment like copiers and postage machines, 
uh, keep a clear line of sight between your office and the most productive areas of your business so you're aware of what's happening amongst your employees. And, you know, just keep things organized, like your shelves and cabinets. Uh, make sure their contents are not only easy accessible, but also that they're out of sight when not being used. You know, consider putting up sliding doors or cabinets in storage areas, and remember that the floor is not a storage cabinet either, right? So these are just a few ideas on how you can keep your working environment more organized and productive. And if you keep your workspace organized, you'll be more organized too. Time management strategy number eight is keeping your digital files organized. So I know this sounds a lot like strategy number seven, but if your digital data is not properly organized, you'll waste hundreds of hours each year searching for information you need on a regular basis. So, for example, your customer database and sales inquiry records, they're worth their weight in gold, and you can't afford to get behind when updating this information or then poorly storing it for later retrieval. There's many easy-to-use software programs that will manage and organize your customer data for you, so it doesn't need to be a time-consuming or tedious exercise. A very simple way to manage digital information is to keep it in short and medium and long-term file folders. So you can create shortcuts on your computer desktop uh, for folders or files you're constantly using. And, of course, there's always customer relationship management software to track all your customer and, and prospect interactions, things like uh, uh, you know, Salesforce.com. So in today's world, having quick and easy access to customer and other digital data is a must, so you need to keep it organized, too, just like keeping everything else on your desk and in your office organized so you can be more productive and not waste time looking for things uh, and recreating information. Time management strategy number nine is about clear communications and never assuming that people know what you expect of them. So uh, perhaps one of the biggest time management issues in business, and it also occurs in personal relationships, is miscommunications. And it's a dangerous issue that can cripple any business, including yours. So establishing and enforcing clear communication policies on things like accurate note-taking during meetings or writing down task assignments, uh, how to deliver phone messages, all of that will ensure your staff understands the importance of clear and accurate communications. Now, the easiest habit you can do to curb miscommunications is to simply write everything down. Carry a notebook around with you and jot down key points, figures, and deadlines, and don't assume that you'll remember everything later. You have at least a hundred other things to consider and remember on your mind, so writing things down can avoid miscommunications due to uh, failure to remember all the details. You also want to remember all to return all communications promptly, including your email and phone calls. Uh, repeat back phone messages and phone numbers and other figures to confirm you recorded the information rec uh, correctly. Now make sure you record your appointments in your phone or, or in your calendar the moment you make them, otherwise you will forget them. Then double check everything to confirm addresses, phone numbers, meeting locations and times. Uh, make sure you maintain those accurate customer contact logs with dates, times, and phone numbers like we talked about keeping your data organized. Uh, post checklist in your store or office for routine operations and procedures so your employees or yourself know that you've accomplished all the steps and dotted your I's and crossed your T's. And then if you're making any changes to policies and procedures around your business, make sure they're announced and communicated clearly to your employees. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, the palest ink is better than the best memory. So my best advice for you is write things down and then you won't have any miscommunications. Time management strategy number 10 is stop any duplicated efforts. So avoiding duplicate efforts is a key element of time management that's closely related to effective communications. Studies have continually shown that many businesses often duplicate and sometimes triplicate efforts that only need to be completed once. So when you have a clear set of systems and procedures in place that are written down, your staff won't need to reinvent a wheel each time a task needs to be completed. Simple examples of this include having to reread your to-do list every hour to determine what the next important item on your list is. So if your list is already structured by priority, as it should be, then this would be a needless task, right? You wouldn't be duplicating your effort to always be reviewing your things to-do list. Likewise, if two staff members are working on similar projects but they're unaware of each other's efforts, their work will not only be inconsistent, but their efforts could be duplicated. So having meeting minutes and individual task assignments will assure that everyone's on the same page and everyone understands their personal responsibilities. So avoiding duplicate efforts is an easy problem to fix once they've been identified and communicated. Time management strategy number 11 is to eliminate procrastination and perfectionism. You know, procrastination is something we all face at one time or another and likely have since our school days. However, given the pace that the world operates at today, you'll only fall further behind your competitors if you allow procrastination to rule your day. So the question is, how do you stop procrastination? 
Well, it's really quite simple. The big thing to do is just get started. No matter how boring or tedious or painful a task may be, just finish the task and then reward yourself by crossing each step off your to-do list. And when you do that, you're going to feel great about things and things are actually going to start getting done. Uh, perfectionism is another time bandit that many small business owners often fall victim to. Uh, perfectionism can be paralyzing for fear that there isn't enough time and resources to get a task done perfectly and consequently the task or project never gets completed. So sometimes perfectionism can even hamper your ability to delegate and say no to tasks because you believe no one else can complete them as perfectly as you can. So the thing to remember is just do the best you can with the time and resources you have and just get things completed. You know, there's an old saying that I live by that progress over perfection is always the better choice. So take action, do things, don't worry about it being perfect. You'll be able to get things done, get them off your list, and recover more time for doing the next one thing that falls onto your to-do list. Time management number 12 is plan your work and then work your plan. You know, have you ever placed an ad or signed up for a trade show on the fly because it was cheaper, faster, or more urgent than creating a real marketing plan? Or does your staff have a clear idea on where your business is headed over the next 6 to 12 months or even the next 3 to 5 years? A lot of studies have shown that less than 10% of small businesses have an up-to-date marketing and strategic plan as compared to the majority of large corporations and public companies, which typically have both. Marketing and business plans take time and effort to create, but they work and they pay off. They also save you time and money compared to having a haphazard or fly by the seats of your pants sales and marketing strategy. When you have a marketing plan in place, you have an idea of how many promotions you'll be placing each year. That way you can maybe earn a volume discount with your ad agencies. Your marketing materials will complement each other and you'll be able to deliver the same message to the same target audience over and over. Plus your strategic business plan, that's going to provide you with a guide to reference when you're making decisions. So you can be more productive in quick decision making if you can relate it to something on your strategic plan. You can always repeatedly ask if the current task at hand will contribute to your overall vision or does it just seem like something that come up as a good idea in the moment, which may not be the best use of your time. Remember, planning includes both short and long-term time frames and it applies both to your daily to-do list and to your overall marketing plan and your management of your marketing budget. So having that plan provides you with a means to measure your progress. It's a system for identifying priorities and it'll help you manage your personal time. So as they say, always plan your work and then work your plan. Time management strategy number 13, avoid needless impromptu and unstructured meetings. Now, this may seem like a time-sucking issue that's out of your control, but it really isn't. When you're in control of your own time and through strict scheduling, as we talked about earlier, you can establish a structure for internal and external meetings that everyone around you can work within. For example, if you minimize impromptu internal meetings by letting your staff know when you're available for a quick chat and when you're not, if something's important, ask them to schedule a time to meet with you that works for both you and your schedule. And this will not only save you time, but it'll also encourage your staff to find solutions to their own issues and then only approach you with more urgent and challenging matters instead of interrupting you all the time. Because let's face it, you can't always avoid having meetings, but you can avoid having unstructured meetings and impromptu meetings. Just ask for or create an agenda for each meeting with a clear objective and an amount of time allocated to each item on the agenda, and that'll keep your meetings focused and on time. Also, if a meeting does run late, give yourself a reasonable buffer and then of time between the meetings and then politely leave for your next meeting and appointment so you're not late for it. You can always follow up with your colleagues or staff later to catch up on the pertinent items you missed if you had a bug out of a meeting a little bit early. Time management strategy number 14 is to establish clear policies and procedures. You know, a clear policy and procedure manual is like a marketing or business plan. It takes time to create but ultimately saves everyone in your business time, money, and effort. Having a simple step-by-step -step guide to the way we do things around here, that's an invaluable resource for your existing employees and any new staff you may want to onboard. It'll provide a clear set of expectations for how you like things done, and it'll avoid that miscommunications that we talked about in one of the earlier strategies. But unfortunately, too many businesses just make up their policies and procedures on the fly, and that creates these dangerous scenarios where mistakes are made and expectations are not clear and a lot of time can get wasted. So for example, uh, some items that should be included in a comprehensive policy and procedure manual would include things like how do you handle recruitment, how do you handle customer complaints or late payments, um, how do you do employee reviews, how do you handle customer relations, uh, re how do you handle customer returns, things like salary structure, uh, how to handle customer inquiries, exchanges, when it comes to salary structure, bonus structure, your um, harassment policies, etc. If you write this stuff down, 
then people will be able to understand it. You'll avoid miscommunications, and they won't be bothering you, asking you what should be done in any particular situation. So having clear rules of the road keeps everyone pulling in the same direction, and it'll save time for everyone. Time management strategy number 15 is about using and maintaining the right tools for the job. So the equipment your business needs to operate effectively should always be on hand or at least be easily obtained. Now, whether you're a high technology business or a local tradesman, um, knowledge of the latest advancements in technology will increase your efficiency and it'll help you stay on top of your competition or help you maintain your position as an expert and perhaps even provide an easier way of getting things done, which will save you time. So you should always ask yourself, is it more effective to outsource or subcontract the task to someone with access to the right equipment or to buy the equipment for yourself? Now, if your business relies on tools or technology for doing a daily task like a trades profession would, then obtaining the best quality tools you can afford is crucial and will save you time. But just like we talked about earlier about delegation, if you don't have the right tools or you're not the expert at doing something, outsourcing it to someone who has those tools uh, might be a better way to be more productive and a better use of your time. If you do have your own equipment, if you're a trucking company, landscaping company, or someone that has a lot of equipment, you need to keep it uh, in good working order and maintain it. So it may seem obvious, but you know, you'll understand the importance of equipment maintenance if your computer network or your server has ever crashed or your point of sale system is malfunctioned, right? Your business can be slowed to a standstill or stopped if your equipment's not in good working order. So now, of course, there are instances that just can't be predicted, but regular maintenance of your essential equipment will reduce catastrophic failure occurrences and those things waste your time and, um, uh, you know, you just can't be out of business because some piece of equipment has not been properly maintained. All right, so that's the top 15 strategies you can use to make the most of your most precious resource. So let's summarize what we've learned here today. Number one, most business owners carefully manage their financial and personal resources, and they do pay attention to the performance metrics of their business. But most businesses and business owners don't realize that time and the time of everyone in the business requires the same attention and diligent management as all the other metrics in the business. You know, when you're too busy and overloaded with work, we often tend to switch into reactive mode and we don't make it to the bottom of our daily to-do list and we often end up handling issues and making decisions at the very last minute, which can lead to even more wasted time if the wrong priority decisions are made. Now, as I mentioned earlier at the start of this course, one of the great benefits of choosing to become proactive in time management is that you can become proactive in all the other areas of your business and your life as well. So when you become proactive in how you approach your business and your life, you can take the steps to grow your business while getting back the time to do all the other things you've always wanted to do. And what can be better than that? So that wraps up this Profitable Time Management Strategies course. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a few tips and techniques that will help you uh, manage your time more effectively during the day. And that will be the first step towards building the business and the life that you love by being able to do the things that need to be done to serve your customers, to keep them satisfied, and to make sure that you're moving forward in building a business that will give awesome customer experiences and create um, all the profit and revenues that you so richly deserve. So um, that's it. And I hope to see you at another Chain Reactions marketing course.